Oh, hey, welcome back to another episode of Behind the Lens. I'm just sitting here, just bought some new lights. Got me some Ulanzi lights. They look pretty cool. If you haven't noticed, I've been putting links in the description for things that, you know, some of these photographers are talking about that you might find helpful or useful. So the links are in the description on every episode. It's probably something different. So make sure you check that out. On this episode, I'm talking to my man, Matt, AKA Machu Toys on Instagram. I met Matt uh, about a year or so and um, been checking out his photography. Man, I'm, 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 I like it a lot. You know what I mean? It's pretty good. And um, yeah, I had the pleasure to sit down with him and chop it up about everything. So, Check out the episode. Yeah, I was talking to Jay Shot uh, like what was it last week or two weeks ago? Mm-hmm. No, last week. I don't remember. But um, when I was talking to him, I, I had asked him like, "Oh, you know, what do you guys do?" Because I see like sometimes you'll post pictures up, or one of you guys will post the pictures up. Like it looks like you're like in a studio or something. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Oh, that's pretty dope, man." So I thought yeah, you guys yeah. like worked on like a TV show or some shit. <laughs> nah, he does. He does commercials. So. Mm. He's- He's he's but he's like also in the corporate aspect. So like th- that's not like every day. It's like every once in a while he'll like you know he'll he'll reach out to me like hey we got this shoot coming up so I need you to block off these dates. Mm. And I'm like all right, all right cool. Just tell me what I'm doing. Either I'm like running a second camera, or like doing photography or or whatnot, or just helping yeah. out. You know. That's pretty dope. Yeah. That's cool, man. Like um. Like like camera like video camera type stuff. Yeah, so he's got like one. He's his buddy is like his main shooter, so he hires him, and then I'm like the secondary. I'm like the secondary shooter, but like I learned so much from this guy that I'm like, all right, I'll come in. Doesn't matter, you know. Like usually they do, they film in like a green a green screen studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just get the assets uh, for for what they need, but like. I told you know like like we're what we're doing right now we're just you know chatting it up and I learned a lot from this guy like he's the reason why I bought like uh, some of these lenses that I have because I, you know I, I asked him like well, what do I you know like what do I need to achieve this kind of look mm-hmm. right and like if I'm if I'm doing video myself out like usually I do um, videos for uh, a gym here in Staten Island um, I ask him like. What do you think is a good lens that's an all around, you know, versatile lens? And that's why I have this one on this camera. So this is like my, my bread and butter lens. Oh, this is not just a regular cam? Yeah, this is this is actually my camera set up. Like I that's also why I don't shoot uh, a lot of uh, toy picks as much, because now with this with the show, I just leave my gear set up. So that way it's like I'm not mm. trying to put everything back together. Yeah, cause you you look crispy as fuck when you when you do the show and stuff like that. Especially compared to uh, Jay's stuff, like his his side, you're mm-hmm. just like crispy as shit. I was like, damn, what? He must have like them high quality <laughs> fucking cameras. Yeah, well, I, so it's, it, I, it's a lot with messing with the settings and really. I was talking to who is it? Toy Father and No Chewing. And it, when you're when you're getting into photography, you really want to invest in good lenses rather than the camera because you can always just upgrade the camera later on but if you have a good set of lenses that you can use on those cameras you know those those are what really does the most of the work yeah i got i gotta invest i i only i bought like the the kit Mm -hmm. at like walmart and shit right with the the lenses that it comes with then i ended up buying like i think a like a 50 milliliter millimeter Mm -hmm. And then I got my um, Johnny sold off his Canon, and mm-hmm. I ended up buying his um, macro lens. 
And this is oh. that's basically what I use like all the time, you know? Yeah. Cause I just I, I like fell in love with the way it looks. I love like the close up of it. Okay. And like the yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So but um you know it, but I want to get into like other stuff. I tried using other lenses and it's like I I don't know, I like I feel like ugh, now I gotta put in more work. Mm-hmm. instead of just focusing on that one and everything else like being blurred in the background type of shit mm-hmm. but I, I definitely want to get into some more lenses you know what inspired you to pick up a camera and then to just want to shoot not even like figures just maybe just in general so like when i was i was really big into crossfit back in like 20 so i started like in 2014 2016 i think is when i started picking up the camera because like it was you know like in on Instagram or whatever social media you're using. Everybody was doing their gym videos or showing them at the gym. Mm -hmm. Basically I started out with my phone. Then Mm -hmm. I started doing videos for the gym. Just like, you know, just to put up on their stories or whatnot. I used my iPad and I was like, you know what, let me, let me actually get a camera. So I started out with the, I was looking into it and, and whatever had good video quality and was affordable at the time. So I got, um a lumix which is a panasonic Mm -hmm. uh it was a what was it a g8 g85 which is mirrorless and i was looking because like i wasn't sure if i wanted to get mirrorless or or full frame but mirrorless is lighter and it's easier to work with when you're you know moving around and trying to take video so that's that's why i started on down that and then a lot of people use like a lot of uh, wedding videographers they use the gh5 so then that's that's what I moved on to now. I have two of those cameras. Oh, nice. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this? Like, when did you start? How long ago? Yeah, like 2016, 2017-ish. And then I learned, I taught myself how to use Premiere to edit the videos. Mm, okay. Because um, ever since college, like I went to, I went to um, New York City Tech for graphic arts uh, for college. And uh, I had Adobe, like the whole collection suite. So I've just been paying for that. And I was always using like just Illustrator and Photoshop, but like I had the whole thing. So it was just like, well, I have the programs. I might as well learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the, what is it? Creative Cloud, you're paying, like if you're paying for the whole thing and I was using like two or three apps. So I was just paying for the whole thing, but like all the other apps I'm not using. So like After Effects, Premiere, some you know like adobe audition which is for audio like i'm i've I've been trying to teach myself that ever since like just through youtube tutorials Mm. and and so you mainly so you started off basically for the video aspect of it yeah for the video aspect for the gym yeah Mm -hmm. what made you transition into toy photography so I started buying lights because I kept complaining that like there are parts of the gym that were not lit properly. So I'm like, let me, let me buy some lights. Cause I see like when I watch the YouTube video tutorials, you know, people are like showing, you know, how to, how to light a subject. So then when I started buying these lights, I'm like, all right, I need to practice like ways to light my subjects. So I just grabbed the toy off my shelf. And I think it was the, uh, like the, the SHF Vegeta, which is the first one I bought, like as an adult, that I, I I got it in Manhattan at a bookstore for like thirty five forty dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I started lighting that, and then my cousin works with. Do you know Bone Claws Customs? Yes. So he, my cousin worked with him. Uh, they were working in an auto shop, and. My cousin was saying, you know, my, my buddy, he does like dioramas for toys. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. So then like, as I started to look at, look into buying figures, I started to chat with uh bone claws and I think I, I, yeah, I bought my first dial off of him. So then I started shooting. Um, I think it was the Mayfex Spider-Man, the homecoming. That's my first post on IG. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, but basically it was just all for me to practice lighting. <laughs> so you took it up. You took up toy photography to try to get better at your uh, videography. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I took I took photography uh, twice in college. Uh, the first college I went to, and then I transferred over. First college I went to, I actually was about to fail out of uh, photography. Um, and then the second time, it was when they were introducing digital cameras 
into the into the course because the first the first time I took it it was like when you had to use a manual camera and you had to you had to exp you know you had to develop the the, the photos yourself in the mm -hmm. in the dark room and I was like man I don't have that time I have to I have to get to work so like at the time I was going to I was going to school and I was going to work so I had to go in between but you can only use the dark room when you know like at, not during class like in your own time. So I never had the time to do it. I was like, you know what? I, I got to drop this class because I was about to fail it. Mm, man, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. And um, and you said you started. So what were you using that same camera for um, toy photography? So like the first camera I was using, I was using the G85. Uh, yeah, I was using the same camera. I was using a kit lens at the time. Um, and then little by little, I was getting more gear because when I was working at the gym and the, they they were asking me to do videos. It was getting, I was doing the videos, I guess, pretty, pretty good enough that like people were coming into the gym because through their social media. Mm -hmm. So they were seeing the videos, blah, blah, blah. So they started to invest in me more. And like, they, they were buying me my first equipment. Like they bought me a drone. Oh, um, nice. I said like, listen, I need to upgrade this camera. Cause I think, I think I, this G this GH five, um, the video quality looks crisper and, uh, I think we'll get, we'll get better videos. So like, they're like, yeah, all right, yeah. you know, buy it. And then I'll, I'll you know, I'll, 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 I'll reimburse you. And I'm like, all right, dope. You know, <laughs> he was like, and that's, <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's actually where I met J shot in that gym. Oh, okay. he was a, he was a morning guy. Cause he's, he was always going to the city. So he, he went like 6am not waking up at that time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> And this was this was right before the pandemic. Like uh, one of the coaches, like one of my my good buddy, was like, you know, we have we have a guy who's in production. I don't I don't know if we should if you should try to like come in and 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 chat with him. And we were at the time we were doing like these little video segments where we would uh, showcase one of the members of the gym. And J Shot was actually lined up for the next one, right? But for so like th I think it was probably the pandemic that stopped us from actually going forward with producing more. Mm. Right. Or like, um, yeah, I think it might have been the pandemic or maybe it just like one of the coaches just fell, fell off with with doing it. But like I, I do have that footage somewhere of like, um, you know, Jay shot working at it like 6 a.m. Jim is empty. It's just him and the coach, you know. Um, but then like we started chatting and we kept in touch. And then. Oh yeah. So this was not during the, this was before the pandemic, like a few, maybe like one or two years, but like when the pandemic hit the gym closed and we had to like either work out in the park or I would hit up J shot and he'd let me work out in his garage. Mm, so we nice. actually grew closer through that. And then I was like, you know, I also have this, you know, other Instagram account and it's just, you know, strictly just toys. <laughs> this was like when I, I think, yeah, I didn't even break a thousand followers at the time. I didn't really take it like seriously, but yeah. once I broke that, once I went over that hurdle, um, I was like, I might have something in this because like, you know what, this is picking up more traction than my actual page, my personal page. And, um, he, when I, when I showed it to him, he, he actually pushed me to pursue it more. Oh, nice. You know? nice. Yeah. And then he, 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 you know, like you said, like we do, we work on production. He actually offered me some gigs, like my first time on set on a commercial was through him. And I learned a lot, like really quickly. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I think that's like super cool, right? When you meet somebody and um, you find things out from them, you're like, oh, wow. Like we're kind of mm -hmm. not in the same field, but like almost similar interests. Right. right. So you learn from each other, right? Because yeah. when we were talking, he was telling me how much you taught him about toy photography. Yeah. And now you're vice versa and you're, te you're telling me how he's taught you a lot about the production side of stuff and things like that. So, yeah. And like, you know, it almost like it balances out because now you guys, you know, I just started being hip to you both maybe like not even a year or so. I think when we first started talking might have been almost a year ago. Yeah. About a year ago. Not even, not even probably a little less than that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I, I started seeing you guys and, and, and especially your stuff Cause it all just like, you know, rant, Instagram has completely changed from what it's been known. Oh. And, you know, mm -hmm. you know, now it's so heavy reels and stuff, but <clears throat> scrolling just through other people's pages and being on the, on the toy Migos page and just scrolling through that, you see a lot of toy photographers that I might not even follow, 
but because right. they just put that whole uh because of your following here we suggest these guys and i mm-hmm. would just think i didn't even realize that i wasn't following you until maybe like a month or so later mm-hmm. that i would see and i was like oh shit i don't even following this guy right so <laughs> let me hit the follow yeah and but it's stuff like that that you see and i'm like oh man i i really gravitated to to the photos that you did you know especially with everybody like especially now you know and i think the pandemic probably people just sitting down laying around doing nothing it's like hey let me try to figure something out and to keep busy right yeah and no that's and, like that, that's when my 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 account blew up was during the, the pandemic i think it was like around like august it mm-hmm. just it, it went like I, I was struggling so hard to break that first thousand and then i started getting more traction through other pages and then more traction after that and then i got i got stuck around like three or four K or something like that. And I think that was when they started introducing reels mm-hmm. around that time. But I took like a break from toy photography and I was just, I think I was uh, into video uh, back into video games more. And I started um, doing screen ca- screen captures from, uh, from playing Spider-Man PS4. Oh, okay. And then nice. I made yeah, those into edits. That was a hell of a game. I ended up, <laughs> I don't game and I bought that system, the special edition. Yeah. Just for it. And I beat the game and I never touched that PlayStation again. <laughs> With the, the PS4 or the PS5? Oh, no, the four, the four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm, um, um, you know, yeah, but that's pretty cool, man. And like I said, I'm glad I stumbled upon all, all you guys because it's just like, wow, like I was just stuck on like a certain group, right? Like mm-hmm. the ones that you you know, and so like all the ones that are starting up and or like just getting traction, you would you would usually miss them. But because the right. whole thing that they did with the, hey, look at this one, look at that one, look at this one, I, I mm-hmm. ended up finding a bunch of new people, you know, and um yeah, so that that was pretty cool. With um you you had mentioned before that you use uh you had a lot of lenses. What lenses do you do you use right now? Like. Are you like which ones do you switch from or there? Or do you just keep the one lens? So on my main on, on my main camera, like usually, like even if I'm going out for a shoot, I'll I'll use a uh, a Canon twenty four to seventy millimeter. Um, that's that's basically my bread and butter. Depending on the situation, though, like I'll have, I'll switch out if it's so like if I'm in the gym and they're doing like outdoor stuff and like when they're running, I'll switch out. I have I just recently got um was a 75 to 200 i can't really use that for toy photography that's mostly for just outdoors or um you know when i'm taking video or, or taking photos of people it's it's mad it's like it's it's big and it's heavy i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna set that up for uh, toys and i have to be further away you mm, know okay so but those are <clears throat> the two primary ones and then I have another one that's a 12 mil 12 millimeter, which is more wide. So like if if it's in a small area, like I I think I should probably just use it for this, but like I don't want to have the whole thing just showing and then it's me like tiny in the middle, you know, <laughs> when I'm when I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. Um do you have you so you do the videography stuff, you say you're doing both indoors and outdoors. Mm-hmm. Have you do you do that with toy photography? Do you both do, do you stick to just indoors or have you done outdoor and indoor? I mainly just do indoor just because I like the control of using uh, lights mm-hmm. when it's outdoor. The, the amount of time, like if I'm setting up a, a shot with, uh, if I just have a figure in my hand and I'm just doing outdoor photography and just quickly take a shot, then yeah, that's fine. But like if I'm setting up a scene, like with a dial outside, I always think about this in my head. If I were, if I were to do it hypothetically, um, the amount of time that it takes me to set up the scene and then pose the figure, get the right angle, get the right settings in the camera, that sun is going to move. Right. So like my lighting yeah. already changes. So it's like, and then I take, when I, when I do shots, I take at least, I don't know, like 20 shots, at least 20, probably no more, maybe closer to a hundred and I just skim through those. Yeah. Right. It's you're you're always better off taking as many shots as you want and then going back to, you know, and then going back and looking to see which one is the best one rather than like, oh man, I took this much and then going back and then I have to set it up again. You know, it it that's just the way I, I learned how to do it. Just take as many different photos. 
in one shot. Mm. And um, so, so how much different is it like, I guess, transitioning? Like, so if you're using that one camera and you're going from outdoors to back to your fo- toy photography, mm-hmm. like the settings must be constantly always going back and forth, back and forth, constantly yeah. moving. Right? Yeah. So when I'm doing toy photography indoors, I, I usually I usually have like a preset. Right. So I'll I'll change uh, that. I'll, I'll leave a, a preset for the toy photography or for the stream. But when I'm doing toy photography, I mainly just go manual and just mess around with the settings. I already know, like in my head, like it's going to be depending on the lighting scenario, it's going to be uh, this f stop, this this amount, like the, the shutter speed is going to be, you know, like this amount. Um, and, and like the ISO is going to be really low. So like the ISO, I usually for toys, I go, I don't like to go over a thousand if you know, usually I go, I like to go the lowest I can if it's like a hundred or two fifty. So, yeah. With um, you mentioned you like doing the whole lighting, everything on the in, when you're doing indoors. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some other accessories other than lighting, and maybe what kind of lighting do you use? Like you know, brands or you know, I know a lot, a lot of like back then, people were like trying to go heavy on the loom cubes, you know, cause they were so yeah. small, portable and everything like that. But what are like some accessories you like, like flight stands, you know, uh, smoke effects, things like that. Like, what do you, what do you use? So I use for this, for like the haze, I use, um, the atmosphere aerosol spray. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I bought a smoke machine. I just have been too lazy to open it and set that <laughs> thing up. Cause I'm afraid that like, I'm going to set it up and then I'm just going to leave it there. But like, or I'm afraid, like, I'm going to set up that smoke machine and it's just going to stay in the room. It's not going to leave, you know, uh, one day I will, I will whip that thing out. Um, in terms of like flight stands, I don't have flight stands. I actually have, I use armature wire, which you could buy from Michael's armature wire. Yeah. It's like, uh, do I have it around here? Please don't knock it over. Okay. So it comes in like a roll, but like Mm -hmm. you can bend it pretty easily. And I just shaped it into a, um, into like a light stand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Depending on like the figure, if it's too heavy, like you could do the same thing, uh, and just like prop it up. What I'll usually do is I'll put a weight at the base or something heavy to just keep it from moving. But like, you can shape this to however you want to, if you, you know, if need be. And it basically, I just snip it uh, from the roll. I'll snip it to a certain length. I have another one that's like shorter. Yeah. But like it's either that or I'll try to use um, it. Like if they're in the air, I'll try to use wires and then maybe just either edit it, edit that out later. Mm-hmm. Um, but mostly I try to balance everything if I can. Like that's, that's the thing that I try to do. Like there was, um, I did a reel. It was actually on my story at first, but like, it was like the street fighter figures. Mm-hmm. I used, uh, I balanced Ken doing the, the dragon punch on Sagat. Like it, like the way I ha- had him posed, it's like his legs were kind of like leaning onto Sagat as he's taking the punch. And there was no, there was no strings. It was just all balanced. Nice. Nice. Um, Don't when you like use the, the, the aerosol can for the smoke, mm-hmm. how do you like that? Because I see a lot of people use it, but I'm always like, eh, why am I going to buy it? Because I feel like I got to keep spraying or whatever. So I just go and, you know, I took a, a page out of Cheney's book and I bought myself a vape hey. and I use it with no no nicotine, nothing like that. And I just use it for yeah. the smoke. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it usually works for me because mm-hmm. it's, it's so easy to use and I could just literally just blow into it as the time goes instead of constantly buying the cans. But I, right. I do see like the difference of like the thick smoke that that produces to the one right. that the can does. Yeah. You know? The cans are more of a haze, right? I, like it's, it's not as it, the, the, the thickness of the, of like a vape, it'll stay there a little longer. And I, I, I forgot who I was watching, but somebody said, to if you wet the ground first, it'll stay there a little longer. It'll linger around. Oh, nice. And I haven't tried that yet, but I plan on doing that on like future shots. 
Oh, I, mm-hmm. that's that's probably something I'll definitely use because yeah, I actually uh, right behind me I got that the Mesco Crow figure, yeah, uh, with the seventy eight points of articulation um, rooftop dial that he just put out mm-hmm. that I got, and I want to do the whole rainy, you know, foggy effect. Yeah, so I might you know I might try that out. Yeah, yeah if you do that, then if it's if it are you gonna actually use pr- uh, actual water droplets to yeah or like a a, a, a spray bottle. It's a spray bottle, yeah. Yeah, because if you use a spray bottle, you can get like a finer mist, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then since you're using the spray bottle, you're wetting the ground that it's, you know. So then you could just use the vape and it should linger a little longer. For yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out. Oh, it also nice. depends on the settings you use on the camera, mainly your shutter speed. So, yeah. Uh, you want a quicker shutter to get the movement of, of the like a faster shutter speed to get the movement of the of the the raindrops, um, and also like the movement of like the haze or the smoke that's in the frame. Otherwise, if it's if you use a longer shutter speed where it's exposed longer, um, you're just gonna get like it's it's gonna be like more hazy because it's you don't see the actual movement and the camera is just capturing however seconds or fractions of a second. So it's just, it's just going to linger there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had did a shot with, uh, the DC collectibles Joker. I want to say it was. Oh, nice. nice. From the animated series. And, mm-hmm. um, Johnny had, you know, given me some tips on how to use the, the rain effect. And I, it took me a while to figure it out and get it just right. But uh, mm-hmm. I was very happy with the the end results of that photo, you know? Yeah. And then, so yeah, I, I definitely wanted to mess with that again to maybe see if I could get a little bit better using a different figure and a different pose. Cause it was, maybe it was just like a walking pose type of thing, you know, mm-hmm. but it, it was, it was something that I was like, Oh wow. I can't believe like, I, I, I really, I really enjoyed doing it. And I loved like the way it came out, you know? Yeah, no, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, in terms of lights, I use um, depending on the scenario. If I want like a really bright looking daylight, I have a a Godox SL sixty or whatever. It's like one of those those big like per, it looks like a production light and it has a mm-hmm. dome over it. Um, okay, that one I get like the the brightest looking light, and with the dome, it's softer. Um, if I take it off, it's just like really harsh. So it could look like a harsh sun if I wanted it to. Mm, and then okay. uh, I have these. I have these um, Falcon Eyes F sevens. I have three of them, I think, and they're magnetized. Um, oh, nice. US, USB charge. Um, and they all they also have those different settings like. You, you'll find these RGB lights to have. What I mainly like about this is the brightness that you can get. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is charged. So like, oh, yeah, this is bright already. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can change the, you know, the, the color temperature. It's also RGB. But what I also like is that you can change the, the um, saturation of the light of the color. Right. So I, I have those square Alonzi's that everybody has. I don't know if you can change the intensity of the color. So if you want like a, like a hint of red and like, you know, it's always just going to be an extreme red. Mm, okay. Not like I'm not talking about like the brightness of the light. I'm talking about like the amount of color in the light. Yeah. Yeah. But also, but like you could, you could do that in these, these are the, the Lanzi light wands. If two of these, these are really good. I like these a lot. Where do you where do you get those like on Amazon or anything? Or Amazon. Like Amazon, Amazon, yeah. This is this is the pricier one. I actually got this for um, when I was doing videos. Not really the toy photography, but then um, I started using them for toy photography. You can actually get these like when they have like Prime Day sales, or if it's Black Friday, you can get these pretty. They they go on sale uh, pretty often. Um, oh, but nice. For the price of this, you could probably get like two or three Alonzis. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then and because they're portable and small like that, you could just take them anywhere with you, right? You could take them anywhere with you if there's like you know you can if it's mag, you know uh, if there's like a metal surface you can mount that like 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 the Ulanzis also they have a magnet too. This magnet oh, nice. is a little stronger though. 
I've mm-hmm. noticed. So like when I I have to be careful when I put it because then it'll just like slam into the metal plate. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, that's pretty dope though, man. Especially with like it being magnetized, you could if you have something like a wall, like I have a, mm-hmm. a pipe, I could just boom put it on and use mm-hmm. it like that. Cause right now, like I don't really have a lot of lighting stuff. I have like um like you said, like the thing, and then I have like that, uh, you know, the throwback. It looks like a blue moon foil type cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I got that, mm-hmm. and I've been using. I use that every once in a while to to try to get the some type of lighting. Like I'm still trying to, mm-hmm. I'm trying to like perfect it, not like perfect it, but just get better at it. Like I'm not, I'm I'm I'm, I'm just starting, right? Yeah. And that was the whole premise of the show is to try to get better through this, right? With from guys like you giving me tips and things like that. So you know definitely try to work on my posing as much as I can with the very little that I do. And mm-hmm. then lighting is another thing to me is important because, you know, when, when, a, when a shot comes into my head, it's always like, I feel like it's almost like I want it to look cinematic. Right. 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 Like everybody's, everybody's shot. I feel like what gravitates me towards a shot is it almost like it tells a story. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. You could just do whatever and have, you know this mario with the plunger somewhere and it's like i could see what you're trying to do with that and i could put a little story to it without even having to explain it in the caption or things like that right right yeah no i i got i get that yeah yeah so like you know a lot of your shots uh, one that pops into my head uh like right away is the uh not too recent but uh the scott hall one that you did in the ring when Mm -hmm. he's about in the ring with uh, as razor ramon right yeah, like I saw that, and it was just like I, I feel like I just I just, I go, I'm watching that match like just yeah. about to start. Right, it's about to start. Yeah, and it's like man, like stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like just little things like that. Like just it captures you, right? And it's just like oh man. So like I, that's why I try to go for whenever I get an idea. Is like almost like a movie scene or a a show mm-hmm. scene or something like just you know snapshot screenshot from there, and that's what I want. Yeah. And you always want to think about it, like how, what's, where is that light being motivated from? Is it like supposed to be like, like for the Scott Hall shot, is it the ring lights, like the, 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 the ring, the, the lights that are above the ring. So like, mm-hmm. I did want like a, like a top down, but I also wanted to have lights coming from the side. So it kind of, um, it kind of, um, cuts the figure out from the background. It, it, you know, it's a, it's like a, a catch light, like or, or no, not a rim light, like how I have this light, so that way yeah. it's highlight on, on my outline. Yeah, man. Like it, I just, you know, the lighting. I know posing is super important, but I think lighting is right up there in that alley. You know, yeah. it's like, like you, they need to be evenly. Like right. yes, you can have a good pose, but if your lighting is kind of off, it like kills the shot, right? Or I think lighting the, is more important than posing. Like I, I'm huge. I'm huge into like posing, right? That's my, that's my jam too. But like, if you the, think about it this way, if you have a really like cool posed figure, and if you turn the lights off, you can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Exactly. Like that's what I was gonna say. Like you, 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 you work on your poses, but then the lighting is off. It's like it won't capture. Like let's say, like the whole left side is way too dark. Mm-hmm. compared to the bright right side or the shadowing is off and it's like i just kills it yeah yeah your pose looks great but it's like you really can't tell how great it is because of that reason you know right so it's like it comes hand in hand and i it, it's and it's talking to to guys like you and the other photographers like i i i get that more and it's like oh, i gotta work on that stuff even more yeah. you know i like so people that, like like mr lee right like he does some good stuff yeah. Uh, on instagram he he takes you know it he'll take photos of even legos or statues right he's not doing some crazy crazy poses um he's lighting it pretty well and it looks great every time i open instagram it's usually you know his his stuff or i'll see like wing collectors right and that's another one i always chat with um He's always he's also big into posing, but he's also big into light painting when he takes photos. Whoa, that's bright. Yeah, that's good. I hope you've been liking the episode so far. Well, let's take a quick break and check out some of the pictures that Matt's taken over the time. 
check some of these out. When, when you first started getting into like toy photography, what were some of the accounts that you might have like looked into? Like, oh man, like maybe mm -hmm. as inspiration or just like, oh, I really mess with this guy. Like, I love what he's doing. Let me, let me try it out. So like, I think the first introduction to toy photography was definitely um, Nose Rain, Richie. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it was a shot with uh, Baby Groot, like that Hot, hot Toys one, one to one scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, shortly after that, it was like, you know, Johnny, um, uh, work more or less, uh, who else? Plastic action, all those guys. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of other people. I, I feel bad. Like if I, if I'm not like dropping any names, <laughs> it's um, all good, man. Yeah. There's so many, right. That you yeah. just, you see, and, and you just like, wow, like I want to try this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, but also, the thing that I've learned the most, actually more, more recently, is if you look at those, those pages, those top pages, they're telling a story in their main shot, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, they started earlier than, you know, before the pandemic and their, their accounts grew. So like during that time, like, you know, or like mid, like around like 2016-ish, I think those accounts are growing really fast. It was the algorithm was so different and there wasn't yeah. that many, you know, there was not that many toy photographers on the scene as there is now, you know, um, yeah, definitely. there's products for toy, uh, people who are toy photographers. They market towards toy photographers now with, with these figures. So yeah, definitely. Like we seen, um, you know, Johnny goes and he does, um, work for super seven, Mm -hmm. uh, Trevor one six shooter. He's doing stuff with Mythic Legions. We see the amazing doing a lot of mess. Oh yeah, the amazing! I can't believe I forgot. I can't believe I forgot him. <laughs> he was actually the first one who got me into into watching all this toy stuff on YouTube. Just like you, watching his reviews, then watching Jay Hernandez Unparalleled. Then I started watching Kevin show Kevin's show, and I think I start. That's when I signed up for like YouTube Premium because I was sick and tired of seeing ads. <laughs> so then like i would just leave these shows on in the background while i'm working um and then because because i was watching kevin's show it recommended that i watch toy migos that's how i got that's how i found you guys oh nice nice yeah <laughs> yeah nah it, it's super cool like to see you know and to hear things like that because it's like now like i used to say all the time like the community you know it's it feels like it's a big community, but at the same time, it feels small. Yeah. Right. Cause it's mm -hmm. almost like, it feels like we all know each other in some way or fashion and we all chat it up here and there. Right. But right. And you right. get like more people like just coming in more and like, Oh, Hey, Oh damn. I didn't even know about you. Like where the hell you been? And then mm -hmm. Kevin was one of those guys to me. Cause it was like, who is this dude? Oh, mm -hmm. he's a, Canadian. Oh damn, there's photography and toy interest outside of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> like, right? And then you see guys like uh Plasti Adicto and and like other guys from like other countries mm -hmm. and it's just it's great to see it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, it's it's super dope. I think yeah. outside of like So I I worked with uh Jason work more or less last year. Um through Jay Shot, through Jay Shot, because like we were like saying, like we should get a, you know, we had a job and we had to do get a photographer, and then like I was like, let's get Jason, you know. So we got Jason. We got to work with him. That was the first time I met somebody actually in the toy community that you know, like that I I I, I looked up to also. But like yeah, yeah. after that, that it was like I I met Kevin because I went to Canada with my cousin, and he's <laughs> you know we went to, we drove to Toronto, and I was like, hey Kev. I'm going to be in Toronto this weekend. Let's go meet up. Let's go to Toys R Us. So I met him there. And then from then, then on, it's just like, now I got to meet as many of these people as I could. I met you, you know, I met, I met Trevor. I, I, that's why I, I really want to go to San Diego to meet, you know, everybody on the West coast too. Oh um, man. That's a must. I'm yeah. just, that's all I got. It's, it's a must. Yeah. I, You'll never want to go to 
stuff in the East Coast again. <laughs> well, the thing is, we we're not we don't have tickets, so so Jay Sean and I are just like let's just book a let's let's get up Airbnb and book our flights, and, you know, just hang out out you know outside of the con because there's going to be other things going on, oh. right? Yes, like yeah. um, I went my first time was 2019. Uh, mm -hmm. I stayed with Cheney and. I had tickets to go to the con, I think three out of the four days. I think I went a total of a day and a few hours and yeah, the rest of the time was outside. And I was like, yeah. it was cool inside, but like the real, every, like the excitement and the whole thrill of being there was being outside, just meeting everybody, everybody. I felt like I was, mm -hmm. with, I'm walking with Chaney and I feel like I was like, a, he, I was walking with a celebrity, like how many people he knew. <laughs> And I'm yeah. just like, wow, like this is awesome. And and I then I went to New York Comic Con and it was like you just feel the biggest Different. difference in the environment and the people, you mm -hmm. know, you're from around here, man. Yeah. You know how we are. Just, who are you talking to? Just keep walking. <laughs> Everybody over there is right. just like, oh hey, what's up, man? Like, oh, what's going on? I'm like, I wasn't even used to it. I was like, hey, right. hey what's up? <laughs> like this, you know? this this past year though i i did have the most fun because it was like by the engine of vengeance that the the has lab that's yeah. where all of us would actually gather and that's where we all met up right like we, yeah, yeah. we would go to see the 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 engine of vengeance and then we'd be like oh, oh is that dario over there you know like <laughs> is that trevor yeah so, no, like, that was cool and was because cool. it was a lot less crowded it was it was a better moment to, yeah. to meet up right yeah, and, it, and that wasn't there. planned. No, and not at all. Not at all. It was just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was so cool. And, you know, to anybody watching, mm -hmm. I readily recommend San Diego, man. Just go. I got my uh, Airbnb booked. I got my passes. I mm -hmm. don't even have a flight yet, but I don't care if I got to drive a bicycle. <laughs> 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 I'm going. I'm going, you know. Yeah, but um, I gotta. Yeah, we gotta get our we gotta get our shit together and uh, book those <laughs> things. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. Um, now I'm 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 looking forward to. I'm saying this like I booked it, but like we have to book it. But like I'm looking forward to meeting you know like Cheney, Adam, Ernie, but more importantly, Chamba because it's like uh, he he's he's coming overseas. You know, we gotta. We gotta like He's way down under. <laughs> yeah, we got. He's got to be treated like a, a king. <laughs> yeah, he, definitely. He sees everybody. Definitely. Um, <laughs> um, what you call it? Let's get into like some figure talk, right? All right. So, has there been a figure that you were excited to get, and when you got it in your hand, and maybe you wanted to go take a shot, it just didn't work out? If you could, like, you know, pick any out of your head that you could remember. Uh, just didn't work out. Actually, my plan. So, do you remember the Ninja Turtle shots that I did? Mm -hmm. Um, my plan for that shot was actually using the SHF turtles and not the NECA turtles. Oh, okay. Because I just bought those SHF turtles from Mario. Um, and I've wanted those for like the longest time, and I was just like, yeah, I'm finally getting these turtles because every time I looked them up, they were so expensive. But I had the um the the disguise turtles, right? From NECA. Yeah. And it took me getting the SHF turtles to really appreciate those NECA turtles. Because mm -hmm. the SHF, it's cool. It, what's cool about those is like, yeah, they have that articulate, they have a little more articulation than the arms. Their legs are made out of die cast. So like you could put them in a lot of poses and it'll maintain that balance because of the weight distribution. Yeah. It's it's bottom heavy. So like once you put it in a pose, you can just like it'll stay there. Um but like there were certain poses that I couldn't hit with it because uh it was actually kind of lacking articulation on the lower half because of the the metal legs, you know? Yeah. So then that's when I was like, you know what, screw this mm -hmm. shot. I'm gonna use the neck of turtles. And that that shot blew up too. <laughs> I was yeah, like, man. Those, those those uh shf turtles man i i ended up getting them luckily for me i got them when mm -hmm. they weren't that crazy so mm -hmm. i i picked those up and i was like oh these look awesome they look really really like close to the cartoon, the cartoon at the time right yeah with the coloring and everything the the green and everything and then i remember um 
when we were doing the quickie minis during the pandemic, a mm-hmm. uh, friend of the show, Sean, he would come on and he would, you know, drop bombs on like what's going to come out again and this and that. And he said, oh, the turtle line's going to pick back up. You know, yes, it was a few years ago, but I believe in my man and I'm still waiting. But I was like, you know, we ended up getting word that they were going to put them back out. Mm -hmm. And I think they only came out to like forty, fifty dollars a pop. And I said, dude, if you guys don't jump on these deals and get these reissues that they they're, you know, that they're putting out, Mm -hmm. you're going to regret it when the line starts popping off because you're going to miss out. So they went and I was like, the only thing I regret was not getting another set. Okay. Because after that, when those sold out, forget it. Then that's when the the price yeah. jumped, right? Right. So, so, but then with the NECA stuff, like you see the difference. Like they're yes. not as shiny. They're not, um, like you said, they're not as bottom heavy yeah. because of that, you know? And the with the NECA stuff, the little peg holes for the feet help yeah. out a lot, especially well, yeah, when you're, you're trying to do a certain pose or something. Mm-hmm. Um, not only that, but like the... The options with the base, like that, 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 that technology that they have with the swappable, like the, the eyes and the mouths. Oh that's yeah. yeah. With the, awesome, with the ones dude. in the skies. Yes. Yes. Cause yeah. they, they could, you could take them out now. Yeah. Yeah. The ones before that ain't have all that. They didn't have that. Oh, <laughs> no, no, See, no, my no. only, my only gripe about that is like, I wish I got two because it's like, they only have two of each, right? Like two, yeah. there's only like two, um, ma- but like you can't use them for all four turtles. So if you want to have them all smiling, you would need two sets. <laughs> That's yeah, the only downfall. I, like when I first got the the turtles, I got the um the two the packs, cartoon, the cartoon, the 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 the, the con, the con set, uh, right? Which one okay. was? Was it? Yeah, I, I'm almost certain it was. Yes, yes, the one that came in the the briefcase, the 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 turtle. Like the casing, right? That had like okay. the clip and everything. Yeah, that's the one I got first. And you know, those were the, like the darker green ones. Yeah. So they were all like that one color, and and they came with the foot soldier and Krang and Shredder and stuff. And it was awesome. And it was like, oh man. And then more that came out, like you know, then they came out with the 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 cartoon uh, colored ones with the like, uh, what was it like Leo and Donnie and then uh, Mikey mm-hmm. and. 